This video will cover how to install the NZXT Kraken G10 GPU cooling bracket onto the reference version of the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 980 Ti. I will be using the Corsair H75 closed loop cooler, but you can use any Ace Tech style cooler for this installation. I've had a lot of requests to put this video together and I'm actually doing it while riding in a van on a trip right now but this has been a work in progress for a while and I wanted to get it up as soon as I possibly could. You'll notice here I've installed the Noxua NFB9 Redux fan to better match my computer's color scheme. I love Noxua fans but do not like their brand coloring. If you've watched many of my videos another thing I've added to the end of this which is different from the others are some performance specs as well as audio of the difference in noise level when using the bracket versus the reference style cooler. When installing the G10 backplate you will be using the C slot for the mounting screws as with most late model NVIDIA graphics cards. Once you have the screw in place, tighten down the nut to hold the screw into the C slot. You can use a small wrench to tighten these nuts down if you want to, but I just found that hand tight is good enough. Now when installing these screws, you'll need to make sure that you've got them in the right direction. They are narrower down at the bottom so that they can fit within the slot so they don't spin and rotate on you when you're tightening them down. Once the nut is secure, then you'll take one of the flat plastic washers and lay that down right on top so that we'll have a softer surface resting up against the back of the PCB. And then go ahead and proceed to install the next three screws. I'm a big fan of this cooling mod over any of the stock air coolers that come on the graphics cards because it operates much more quietly and also offers better overall cooling as you'll see in the performance specs later in this video. Next thing we want to do once you have all the screws, nuts, and washers installed is to determine which way you want the bracket to face. This is only for cosmetic reasons. And this is really going to depend on your case and the rest of the setup that you have, but I use the Cooler Master Half XB Evo case, which allows my graphics card to stand straight up. Most cases will have the graphics card lying face down towards the ground which is why this first installation will be the most common and is actually the one referenced in the NZXT official installation guide. But for my particular installation I will be flipping this over the complete opposite direction. With this cooling mod I tend to get the question about the VRM and VRAM cooling efficiency. For the VRAM itself this is a much better cooling method than a stock air cooler because with a stock air cooler whether it's the reference or an aftermarket design you'll have a large heat sink that obstructs the airflow of the fan that's directly over the VRM and that large heat sink that I'm referring to is the one that cools the GPU once that large bulky heat sink with heat pipes and fins is removed you will either see the exposed VRM or in some aftermarket models you will see a nice heat sink or heat spreader plate covering the VRMs. You'll see by the orientation of the VRM cooling fan that it is directly over the VRMs and without obstructed airflow as well as a much more effective cooling fan the overall cooling efficiency will be much better than with the stock cooler that was originally equipped. You'll see here that uh, installing an Ace Tech style cooler is pretty simple all you have to do is make sure the notches line up, insert the cooler, and twist it so that the notches lock onto the little pegs on the bottom of the bracket. If you're unfamiliar with this kind of installation of a cooler, then you may want to practice a dry run like I just did before we do the next part, which is in preparing the GPU and applying the thermal paste. The best thing to use to clean the thermal material off of your GPU is a coffee filter because it leaves no lint or residue behind. Make sure you wipe off as much of the old thermal paste without using any cleaning solution first because it'll save you a lot of time and then once the largest amount is gone then use a cleaning solution. You can use 
90% or better isopropyl rubbing alcohol, or even better yet, the Arc to Clean cleaning solution kit linked in the description. And once the GPU is completely clean, make sure that you do the same with your all-in-one cooler. But if you have a brand new one, you probably have thermal paste already applied, in which case you do not need to clean it. You'll also notice the little black squares that surround the GPU. Those are the VRAM chips. I will say that this cooling method is adequate for stock speeds or minor to moderate memory overclocking. But if you plan to do some heavy memory overclocking, you will want to either have a case fan giving direct airflow to the VRAM chips or some small heat sinks like the ones that are linked in the description. As you can see, I chose to use Arctic MX4 thermal compound. At the time I purchased this large tube of it, it was the best compound available, but if I had my choice now, I'd probably try out the Jell GC Extreme, which I'll also link in the description. The performance difference is marginal, but it seems as though the Jell is the way to go right now. I prefer to use the P method, which is essentially just putting a drop of thermal paste of the size and shape of a drop of P right in the center of the GPU. And this is the most difficult part of the installation process. You'll have to affix the cooler into the GPU bracket and then install the cooler and bracket onto the screws all at the same time while keeping the cooler as level as possible so you don't smush all of the thermal paste to one corner of the GPU. So while holding the cooler and bracket level, you're going to insert the bracket onto the mounting screws on the outermost holes of the bracket. I chose to put some nylon washers down before I installed the thumb screws onto each of the mounting screws. It's not necessary, but I chose to do it because the little rubber washers that come already attached to the thumb screws are not very sturdy and tend to mush out and give away, especially if you're installing this on an AMD bracket that use the inner holes. Now when you're installing each of these, make sure before you start tightening them down, you've got them all on about two to three threads tight. And then you can start tightening them down by hand, doing a cross pattern, starting with one, jumping to the opposite corner, and then the opposite corner from there, and so on and so forth until each of these are hand tight. They just need to be hand tight and snug. Do not over tighten these because you could risk bending and cracking the PCB or damaging components on the graphics card itself. And the purpose of tightening little by little in a cross pattern is to make sure that the thermal compound is compressed and distributed evenly over the GPU. Unfortunately, I forgot to install my little adapter cable for the fan header. This will allow your graphics card to power the fans itself as long as you're using PWM fans. And I've also included a link to this in the description. Ideally this would have been installed before the bracket itself, but you can bend the cable to the side and fit it underneath the bracket if you need to. Again, this is unnecessary to have, but it is a nice feature if you would like to be able to set fan profiles for your graphics card and allow the graphics card itself to control the fans based on the temperature of the GPU. I've also attached the fans directly to the motherboard fan headers and controlled them through the motherboard BIOS as well. But the results are much more satisfying using the fan header on the GPU itself. And I've also included a uh, multiple fan adapter so that you can connect multiple fans directly to the GPU and that's it. Time to install the graphics card into your computer and give it a go.
Thank you.